With the recent news of Platini being arrested, I have a problem with that terminology, but I figured it would be a good time to take a look at what exactly is going on with the 2022 World Cup, the different allegations and controversies, why Platini was questioned by authorities, and whether FIFA is realistically looking to move the 2022 edition. By the way, hello. I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV. We're currently uploading daily videos on the various international competitions this summer on top of other programming, so subscribe if you're new and the content isn't completely unbearable, of course. And by the way, thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. OneFootball provides football fans with the latest breaking news thanks to their customizable news feeds tailored to the players and competitions you care about with live match tickers, highlights, live scores, and more. Link in the description for a free download on iOS or Android. Okay, so let's talk about one of the main controversies, the corruption allegations in both the bidding and awarding of the World Cup itself to Qatar. First, there was the massive email and bank transfer leaks in 2014 by the Sunday Times that showed that former president of the Asian Football Confederation, Mohammed bin Hammam, who himself is from Qatar, paid over $5 million in order to win the support of voters for Qatar's bid for the 2022 World Cup. The Sunday Times also said that he had met with Vladimir Putin in October of 2010, just one month before the awarding of the 2018 and 2022 World Cups, in order to discuss, quote, bilateral sports relations. There was another allegation that sprung from the leaked documents that alleged that Bin Hammam facilitated a gas trade agreement between Qatar and Thailand in exchange for Thailand's support of Qatar's bid. That of course was denied by Hammam. So Bin Hammam stepped down from the Asian Confederation presidency in 2011, was removed from the FIFA executive committee in 2012, and was thus banned from football for life. It was overturned once by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, saying that there wasn't enough evidence, but he was handed a fresh lifetime ban later in 2012. Then there's of course all of the other bribery allegations, such as Jack Warner, the former head of CONCACAF and vice president of FIFA, who according to bank details, was allegedly paid $1.2 million by a company called Chemco, which is of course owned by who else but Mohammed bin Hammam. An update on Warner, he's still in Trinidad and Tobago, still being investigated by FBI, and just recently lost his appeal to dismiss the USA's extradition request, so he could soon be on his way to the States to face the music for the 12 charges levied against him for fraud, racketeering, and illegal wire transfers. Then there was two FIFA voters who were suspended because they were caught trying to sell their votes, and then a whistleblower from the Qatari World Cup bid told the Sunday Times that Jacques Anuma of the Ivory Coast and Issa Hayatu from Cameroon were paid $1.5 million in exchange for their support of the Qatari bid. That whistleblower then retracted their claims after being told to do so by Qatari bid officials. Now, that same whistleblower also alleged that the Qatari bid team hired PR firms and former government officials in order to quote, pump out fake propaganda about its main rivals, the United States and Australia. This coupled with the allegations of buying support for their bid led to the two-year FIFA investigation in 2014 and 2015, which in turn led to the arrests of tons of FIFA officials and the seizures of tons of documents. Bye bye Sepp Blatter, Michel Platini, etc, etc. However, one thing that did come from the investigation was FIFA claiming that Qatar wasn't involved in any wrongdoing during the voting process. However, Platini was temporarily banned from anything football related back in 2015 when he was found guilty of FIFA ethics violations and quote, did not show commitment to an ethical attitude. He was originally banned for eight years, but that was reduced to four years. Some of the things that led to this ruling, he received a quote, disloyal payment of around $2 million from Sepp Blatter. And on June 18th, 2019, he was questioned by the French anti-corruption police in regards to his links to the 2022 Qatari bid. Now here's where some media organizations got things a little bit wrong apparently, in that they say he was arrested when in actual fact his presence was requested as sorry about that rhyme, <laughs> as a witness in regards to all of this hoopla. At least that's what his statement from his lawyer said. The main thing that the anti-corruption police wanted to speak to Platini about was his involvement in a meeting just 10 days before the 2018 and 2022 voting in which Platini, the crown prince of Qatar, Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and former French president Nicolas Sarkozy all congregated at the LEC Hotel in Paris. According to France Football, the meeting was conducted in order for the French, Platini, and Qataris to come to an agreement. Qatar would purchase PSG and turn them into a footballing giant, while Qatar would also fund the creation of a sports channel, BN Sport, to compete with Canal Plus, 
Well, PSG was purchased a year later in 2011 by Qatari Sports Investments, and their chairman, Nasser El Khalaifi, also chairs BN Media Group. In exchange, it is alleged that Platini was to give his support to Qatar instead of the USA for the rights to the 2022 World Cup, as Platini admitted that he was initially going to vote for the USA before the Qatari bid convinced him otherwise. Of course, Platini denies any wrongdoing, but in 2015 he said this curious quote, Sarkozy never asked me to vote for Qatar, but I knew what would be good. And later, Platini claimed that, quote, there was a subliminal message at the lunch between himself, Sarkozy, and the Crown Prince. Platini also admitted back in 2014 that he had held a meeting before the voting with Mohammed bin Hammam. Remember him? He's a central figure to all of this. Now, on June 18, 2019, a report from TNT Sports stated that FIFA was looking to take the World Cup away from Qatar, likely because they heard about Michel Platini's arrest. Again, calling it an arrest is a stretch, as he went there on his own accord and answered some questions and left immediately after. Not saying he's innocent, but he wasn't detained or charged with anything, so let's acknowledge that in the spirit of fairness. TNT claims that following Platini's questioning in the anti-corruption office in Nanterre, FIFA called, quote, secret meetings to find a way to move the 2022 World Cup to another location. Reporter Hernan Castillo said, quote, it's not so easy, but today it's being considered, end quote. The problem with this idea is that back in February of 2019, FIFA basically handed half of the rights to the 2022 FIFA World Cup to Qatar directly. Basically, what they did was create a limited liability company or an LLC called the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 LLC, which is the FIFA representatives in this deal and owns 51% of the World Cup. And they will work with the Qatar 2022 local organizing committee, who now own 49% of the rights to this World Cup. So. This is a very different way of doing things, as FIFA has never had a joint venture World Cup as far as the organization and delivery of a tournament before, let alone signing off almost 50% of the rights to the World Cup to the Qataris. Now, of course, they did ensure that FIFA was the majority owner still at 51%, but this makes it all the more difficult if they indeed are thinking of stripping Qatar of the right to host the 22 World Cup. It makes it seem less and less likely. So in the end, we're basically in the dark regarding many of the details and things that are going on behind closed doors. And even though FIFA did a gigantic investigation into the bidding process and deemed everything was fine, I don't know, I find it hard to believe. It's sort of like the top members of a judicial organization being found guilty of accepting bribes and banning certain members of that organization for life because of it, and then later conducting an investigation of their own and saying, nope, Everything is in order here, no wrongdoing. So when you step back and look at the sheer amount of controversies, ongoing investigations by the anti-corruption police in France, and the forced statements from the Qatari organizers, I mean, where there's smoke, there's typically fire. And for me, the only question is just how big that fire is, and whether FIFA are willing to take a massive loss in order to save face should any more damning evidence come to light. Something tells me they won't, especially with how far along all of the new stadia are in construction. Given that one of the advantages of creating an LLC is maximizing profits, and this is FIFA we're talking about, not exactly an organization that is adverse to corruption and controversy, I mean, even the Amnesty International report on the migrant workers' abuse and the deaths in Qatar wasn't enough to put them off. Something tells me that odds on it stays in Qatar despite everything. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, then a like is appreciated and a subscription even more so. I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.